Okay, then uh, perhaps we'll make a start now, spot on time. I won't bother reading out the declaration. It, it is going to be recorded, but uh, there's no members of the public here, so you all know that you'll be on camera. So the first thing on the agenda is apologies for absence. We've got two, there's uh, Julian Amos and Ernie Goldsworthy. Are there any other? There's no others, no. Is it, are there any declarations of interest? <coughs> oh, John? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Uh, item three, Anti Carriage Vehicle Licence. Oh. Being a dri active driver and a proprietor, I personal and prejudicial interest in this matter. Right, okay, thanks. Um, we're going to have a change in the order of, of, of things because Judith's got to go to an important meeting. So the first item on the agenda is item number four, P180321, the land between 3A and 4 Winifred Street, Dowless. So I think we'll take this through this. Yes, thank you, Chair. Yeah, this is uh, a proposed to erect a three-storey property to provide one two-bedroom flat and two one-bedroom flats to include retaining walls. Uh, the site area is outlined red on the screen there. Uh, Councillor Salmon and Councillor Hughes have requested this application be reported to the committee. As a result of the consultation exercise undertaken, there have been no objections. Following the publicity exercise undertaken, four letters of objection were received, which are summarised on pages 17 to 19 of the report. The main planning related concerns are loss of means in neighbouring residents, highway safety concerns and impact of the development on the sewer pipe which runs uh, through the site. This proposal is almost identical to a recent planning permission granted in November 2015. The name main difference is that the slab of the building has been constructed approximately one metre further away from the site of 34, uh, sorry, 3A Winifred Street um, and uh, approximately one point four metres closer to four Winifred Street. Um, that's 3A and that's four the other side there. Um, it would al also set in from the front pavement by a maximum of uh, 1.2 metres further than that approved. Uh, when comp compared to the previous permission, there would be no significant further impact on the amenities of surrounding residents and no difference in terms of highway safety. The committee will also note that Welsh Water have recently given permission to uh, for a build over sewer agreement um, with regard to the pipe running through the site. Uh, therefore, the application is recommended for permission subject to the conditions highlighted on pages 23 and 24 of the report. Uh, just a couple of, so th there's the site there. You can probably see uh, the remnants of the, of the slab on the site there. Uh, the land falls uh, quite steep steeply from the pavement down to the rear of the site. You can see there's a number of garages at the rear of the site here. Um, and the car parking for three car parking spaces is to be provided to the rear of the site here, uh, as you can see on this uh, block plan. Yeah, so th there's, there's the sewer that runs down the site uh, dotted there. Um, it isn't actually being constructed over the sewer, uh, the building itself, but because it's in close proximity of the sewer, then Welsh Water re require uh, such an agreement to be in place. Um, you can see the, uh, here the, the topography of the site where it steps down the site um, and it's going to have some patio areas uh, to the rear of the, the premises. Uh, this one uh, quite clearly shows the adjacent property here which is an of, of identical design to the one that's being uh, or similar design to the one that's being uh, permitted and as you can see they step down in, in terms of the topography of the land. Um, <coughs> so uh, there's the application site. Uh, uh, that's the dwelling that I've just shown you which is of a similar design there. Uh, that's just uh, the distances between the properties with the slab there. And that's the adjacent uh, side elevation of one of the properties. There is a window behind that property, uh, be behind that the ivy there, which is obscure glazed. Um, I popped out on site today to have a look at it. The ivy's been removed, but you can see the obscure glazed window. So in the report, I think it, be, uh, it refers to the ivy covering the window, but when the ivy isn't there, the window's obscure glazed anyway, so there isn't any additional impact on, uh, on those neighbors. Uh, and that's the rear of the site. You can see that uh, the various properties along the row have uh, decked areas and, and, and stepped gardens. So the overlooking is, is, is fairly obvious between existing properties as it stands at the moment. Uh, so as I said, the application is recommended for permission uh, subject to the conditions highlighted on pages 23 and 24 of the report. Thank you, Chair. Are there any questions, Lady Clive? 
first of all, this is not the first Arctic mission where we've had planet permission and we had a, a flat plane of visit on this site, I believe when we were the chair. Um, and here we are, where they've um, not put the building in a, on the site in accordance with the plans. So what I'd like to know is exactly how this came about, um, and particularly in relation to the fact that if they have an agreed plan, they've got a detailed agreed plan with the planet, and the builders come along and they decide for reasons, if it's a mistake, or they might decide for other reasons, they've moved it a few, tree, few feet and it's, it's skewed toward in accordance with the plan. Is, is that uh, the entire responsibility of the de developers to make sure the builders put it there on the plan as it is? Or um, are we involved in any way at all to say, hang on a minute, you've started that, you can't put it there because that's not in accordance with the plan. Now, the reason I asked the chair is that many, many years ago, um, when I was engaged in building a plot I'm living on now, the site was marked out and it was marked out specifically in accordance with the plan. So I'm a bit bemused and baffled as to, this is not the first case, as to why this has happened, and that's why this application is before us, because the plan has changed. Thanks, Chair, I'll answer that, Roger, yeah. Um, the, well, it came uh, to the attention of the plan department through the enforcement uh, section. There was a complaint about it. Obviously, there was a lot of complaints uh, about the previous application that was approved, uh, hence the reason for the site visit. So we had a look. So uh, as, as we always say from an enforcement point of view, when we've got one, for one enforcement officer equivalent of in the plan department, the, uh, the public are eyes in terms of enforcement a lot of the times. Um, so we, ha we, we visited the site and then noticed that the development ha obviously hasn't been built in accordance with uh, the planning permission. It is the responsibility of the developer and the owner to uh, to ensure that the it's built into in accordance with the planning permission. It's not illegal not to build it in accordance with the planning permission, it's just unauthorized. And the planning system does allow you to uh, submit uh, a retrospective application in an attempt to overcome those concerns. As we know uh, from the report, you can see it's not hugely out of, uh, of the position that it was granted permission. The elevations are the same, the height's the same, the rear elevation's the same, the car parking's the same. Um, so it's, it, it's, I suspect it happens on quite a few sites, but not to such an extent perhaps. Maybe there's just a, a couple of centimeters here or 30 centimeters there and, and we don't get to know about it because uh, what's the harm, I suppose. But in this case, uh, there was a, a request uh, to go and have a look at it from an enforcement point of view, which we do, and all we can do is to advise the uh, the applicants and the owners that, that they're not building in accordance with the approved plans and, and suggest they put a ret retrospective application in if we think it, it is potentially going to be acceptable. And that's how it comes around uh, in this case. So, yeah, I mean, in an ideal world, uh, everyone would build in accordance with the approved plans and there wouldn't be any need for ARPA's bankers enforcement officers as we, as we, uh, as we got. But unfortunately, uh, things do go awry, awry sometimes, and, and that's what happens. As I said, it's not legal. They can put an application to overcome it. Uh, we've got to deal with it uh, on its own merits when it comes in. It's not to say it's always going to be acceptable, um, but in this case, given the minimal changes from the original scheme, uh, the recommendation to us was to approve. If you look, re read the report, um, it's not just a mere few inches. Um, it's few feet, um, which I would suggest, Chair, um, can make a difference. Clearly, the residents around there became aware after they put this slab in, they noticed that it wasn't in accordance with the plans, and that's why the enforcement officers came there. And I understand we haven't got the level of enforcement officers there, frankly, that they should be in the planning department. but. 
just to try and um, condense my first question, there is no um, uh, real um, issue as far as we're concerned. We don't have to, as a planning department, we don't have to check anyone before they start that that place you mark out in accordance with the plans. If the answer is no, we're always going to get this because whether they make a mistake, Chair, I suggest to you that in some cases the builders are there and they could say, well, no, if you move it just, just a bit that way, that will that'll make it better. So um, I, I'm just, you know, there's, a, there's three flats going, you know, it's a, it's a tall building with three flats going there. So if you get the marking out and the base wrong, you're in trouble right from the start. So perhaps you could explain um, to you that we don't check anybody who's had permission, had all the conditions applied, and then we just leave it to them to say, okay, you know what you're doing. Yeah, the, the risk is entirely with the developer. <coughs> now we've got, um, I, I don't know whether we had them back in 2015, I don't think we did, but this, the, the first condition on the, the planning permission uh, these days uh, is that the development shall be uh, constructed in accordance with these plans, which are the approved plans uh, to the application. Um, I've been a planning officer for 26 years, and this has happened in every authority I've dealt with in 26 years. You often get, for one reason or another, whether it's uh, they didn't know actually know where the exact position was, or there may be something in the position that they had to move it. It's 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 always happened. So we, uh, no, we don't have to check every uh, application. The risk is is firmly with uh, the developer and the, and the applicant, and they are well aware of, of the plans that have been approved because uh, either they was they were provided with the stamped plans previously, or now there's a condition specifically on the uh, the approval telling them what plans to to build to. So as I said, it's 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 frustrating. But it's 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 unauthorized. It's not illegal, and it is a route to, for them to overcome it. I mean, it, it, if if they take a risk that it's so, uh, and the risk is so bad in our our, our opinion, which ha has happened, that we rec recommend the application be approved. If the application is approved, then we will do so. But we've got even though it's changed, we've still got to look at all the planning merits of the scheme and, and weigh them up and judge them. I've got. Uh uh, one question in particular, I mean, there are several objections here, which are frankly not on pl planning grounds. But there's one in here that s states that because of the, of the fact that it's not built in accordance with the plan, that they wouldn't get be able to get scaffolding at, I presume, it's the, in between the, in the properties. Um, is that the case? I, I, if, if built as it is now, if, if we approve this, that the neighbours either side there can get if they need to carry out maintenance, they can get scaffolding and there would be a problem. Again, it, it's not a, a planning requirement. Uh, it's not a planning issue that we need to take into account. It's a civil matter between the parties involved, whether they put scaffolding on their land or not. Um, it's a matter for if, if you think of terrace houses where you've got uh, if you've got a two-story extension right tight to the boundary of both both terrace properties, then the only way to do it sometimes is to put scaffold on it. You can actually brick up the side of the house from in, inside. It takes longer to do, but you can actually brick up from inside. I um, actually visited a site the other week that that was happening because the neighbour wouldn't allow access to the site. So it is possible to brick up fr from inside the site rather than outside the site without scaffolding. Um, but yeah, it's it's a it's a it's a civil matter between the parties involved. Obviously, they need permission to scaffold on their, their land and vice versa. I'm sorry to pursue this one, but the obviously um, the enforcement office has been there, and other planning officers have been here too. You've been up there again. <coughs> um, so in this case, where they uh, they haven't built in accordance with the plan, in your opinion, the issue that is related here is one of the objections. They could put scaffold in, even if it's in the wrong position, as according to this application. I, I didn't say they could put scaffold in. All, all I'm saying is that if they needed to put scaffold in on the the adjacent property land, they would need planning permission to do it. They could actually construct it without putting scaffold in on the adjacent property's land. That's what I'm saying. Are there any other questions? Any comments? Oh, well, 
let's have a go to Capo's uh, Capo's it now because it's a seconder it is seconder so if we take it to the boat then It's, uh, it's apparently carried. Here we are. So we'll, uh, we'll quickly do item five, which is information report. Um, item six, it's a, an appeal decision. And item seven is the de delegated report. There are no inaccuracies. No? So you can go if you want to now. Thanks. So, if someone would like to propose a section 100, so and a second it as well then. Well, I've not got any other business, so uh, that's the end of the meeting. Thanks. Thanks, Tom.